So I'm going to get started today. We're going to talk about how to bring traffic to our listings. So this is something that you're encountering right now, because I'm sure you noticed when the market was super, super hot, things were flying off the shelf in a day. And now uh, things might sit for a week or two, or maybe you have to relist them once or twice for your bidding more. So we're going to talk a little bit about different ways to increase traffic to your website, not to your websites, to your listings. Um, of course, you want to uh, um, increase traffic to your websites as well, because that'll help your listings. But today we're going to specifically talk about listings. So uh, I have a couple articles. The first one is more focused on like... Uh, the nuances of actually increasing traffic to your listing itself um, and how you can load. I guess what we'd like to say, how to load a good listing, right? Um, so they say, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there, does it make a sound? If a house is really nice, but nobody looks at it, does it really matter how nice it is, right? So as real estate agents, we have to make that that noise. We have to make that noise for our clients. We have to push a really good listing out there. So it all starts with a few things. So pricing strategies. Okay. You have to know your pricing strategy. Well, you have to list it, list it at a fair market price, which is competitive with all the other listings around. So the first thing is I always encourage people, if you sign a listing today and you're going to load that listing next week, I always tell my clients, you know, we'll sign the listing paperwork today, but I'm going to check in on this a day or two before we're about to list it, even the day of what as I'm listing it, because you never know what's happening in that neighborhood pocket around you. You don't know who else is going to load a listing or whatnot. So your pricing strategy has to be on point. So if you guys have decided to list at $7.99 and the house next door or down the street lists for $6.99, you both have bid dates. Does it really matter if you both list at $6.99. Or if you list at $7.99, how is that going to decrease the traffic to your um, listing? So one of the most important things is your pricing strategy. You definitely have to go online and see how things are priced around you and price your listing accordingly. Um, so if you're listing at $7.99, the guy lists $6.99, you didn't even notice and he put your bid date on the same date, what's going to happen? The likelihood is that he's probably going to get shown more. Um, People might come to check out you out, but they might think, okay, generally the neighborhood's selling for a million, but he's listed at $6.99, you're listed at $7.99, you want $100,000 more than him. This is how the public thinks, even though the beginning price doesn't really matter um, what we're ending up at, right? Um, but definitely, definitely you want to sort of see and compare and use your pricing strategy accordingly. So that's a big thing. Um, you want to make your listing easy to show. So this is a big thing that I talk to clients about. Um, I want to, at a minimum, they say MLS listings should read lockbox for easy showings, right? A lot of them put that because you don't know. A lot of agents hate GoDirect. A lot of clients hate GoDirect um, because you don't have the opportunity to walk through the property and take the time to talk about it because you're afraid to talk in front of the seller about their home because it's their personal home. Um, so you find showings go through a lot quicker. So unless it's really physically impossible, I generally encourage my clients to get out of the house for that showing. I want the lockbox and I want a free property for that agent to show with their client because they're going to take their time and they're going to walk through and they'll have longer showings for it, right? Make a more informed decision when they go. Generally, if they're seeing five homes and yours is a go direct and they're uncomfortable, they kind of fly through the home. They don't take that time to appreciate um, and remember it. So it's kind of like a blur in their, in their memory, right? Um, so uh, if you request appointments or three hours notice or ask the agents buyers tour only during certain hours agents will likely show another listing that isn't so restrictive so while this may be beyond your control and actually that's what it says maybe beyond your control um like tenants we legally have to give them 24 hours notice you want to encourage your clients that they have to let as many showings through the door as possible and really only deny them if it's absolutely 100% inconvenient for them, right? Uh, but I always warn my clients, I'm saying, you're going to have to be inconvenienced. The more buyers through the door, the more people, the more options you're going to have when the offers come in, because more people you show to, the likelihood is that you're going to get more offers at the end of the day. Um, even with tenants that legally require 24 hours notice, this is only a set rule if you have a difficult tenant that you're dealing with. So what I encourage you guys is if you're selling an income property, an investment property for your clients, make friends with those tenants. Ask for their direct number. Go take a walk through the house. Be really nice to them. 
maybe bring them a bottle of wine or a box of chocolates and say, thank you so much. I know it's going to be a disturbance for you for the next week, but you know, I, I, I'm going to communicate with you as closely as I can about every showing. And I ask them, what sort of notification do you need? You'll find a lot of people are nice. Unless they're a difficult tenant, they'll say, I require 24 hours as per the landlord and tenant board. Okay, fine. No problem. You get the nice people out there that go, oh, really? You know, we work during the day mostly. So you could kind of let them through from nine to five. After five, I'd probably need, you know, at least a couple hours notice. So you find a lot of people are reasonable and they'll work with you, which makes your, your um, showings a lot easier if you make friends with those tenants like that. Um, again, use a lockbox. They allow your agents to show a home, even if they aren't present, which is great. We talked about GoDirects. Answer your phone. This is a big one for me. I know so many agents out there and I call them secret agents. You either can't find their number on the listing. You find like Google and you find their number. You call them. They don't answer the phone. Um, really difficult if you reach out to them, email them, ask them questions about the property and they don't get back to you in time. Um, I actually had an re agent recently whose name I won't, but she's been really difficult. She sold her own property and she just doesn't answer her phone. And I had all these questions to ask her. And I'm thinking like, even with a text message, why is it so difficult to get back? Because it should be quick. You don't even have to ask your client. It's about your own personal home. But um, if you don't answer your phone, um, it's definitely going to be difficult. People will give up and they'll show other properties. Or if they don't get the answers they need, they need the clients might not answer. So I actually called the listing the other day and the listing agent was fantastic because it said one parking spot. My clients need two. So I called and I said, hey, is there really only one parking spot? And he said, oh my goodness, you know, I think my assistant listed it wrong. Actually, there's two, a second driveway. One side has one, the other side has two because there's a driveway on either side of the property. And I thought, well, that's fantastic. That's exactly what my clients need. If I hadn't called, he hadn't answered, we wouldn't do this and I probably wouldn't do the showing. So um, answer your phone because it might answer a lot of those questions that they have. Um, uh, voicemail. You guys, if you guys are bad like me, I never, ever, ever check my voicemail. If you haven't got it already, you got to call up your provider and do the voicemail to text thing. That's the only re way I ever listen to my voicemail. Otherwise, I was one of those terrible people. Honestly, I never dial into my voicemail. I let 10 or 15 pile up and then I listen to them a week later. Um, voicemail to text is my lifeline now because I'll read the text quickly and see what they said on um, voicemail. It's fantastic. Uh, I totally encourage it because um, the answer machine the, doesn't really work for me. Um, people calling to get a showing of the property. They won't, most likely won't leave a voicemail. Um, we get a lot of the Realtor.ca inquiries too. I don't know if you guys are following those. Um, also the Remax, the Remax leads for properties. You guys have to catch those right away. So you have to be really responsive. I don't know if you've noticed when they come from back office, you have to click them right away and accept that lead so you can get to it right away, right? Um, here we go. This is another way to attract more traffic. You guys ever looked at a list and you go 2%? Ooh, I don't want to show that, right? Unless my client's uh, directly asking for that property. Uh, a lot of agents work out there like that. So make sure you're offering a competitive buyer agent commission. Uh, so 2.5 is generally what the going rate is for um, the co-op. Look in the neighborhood, though. I mean, there are neighborhoods where everybody's doing 2.25. Um, if it's competitive, then you can lower it. There's nothing wrong with it. But just make sure you're not the only one in that, that pocket doing that or you definitely get shown less, right? Honesty is the best policy. So you find gentle and polite ways to let your clients know improvements that you notice will help the sale. If their house is overcrowded with items, suggest a bin company that can help them declutter their home. Inform them that buyers walking through don't always have the best imagination of spaces and clutter makes the rooms and houses look smaller than they actually are. So I always tell them, I tell them depersonalize. You want to take the personalization out of this, not because you don't want people to judge you. It's because you want them to put themselves in the home. So this is how I try to make it to them and say it gently. I say you want a clean blank slate for people to come and walk through and imagine themselves in this home. So definitely, if you don't want the listing sitting on the market, you want them to come in and say, oh, I could put my couch there and I could hang my picture on the wall. And, you know, that vase we have will go perfect here. Um, declutter. Declutter as much as you can live without right now. I want everything off all the surfaces. I want as much furniture out of here as you can take. Just leave very minimal stuff, okay? 
Uh, honesty is the best policy too. I find, um, it doesn't say it here, but when you're loading a listing online, don't over-exaggerate. I find a lot of listings stay on the market a long time. And I look and I, I see those fishbowl photos, you know, where the rooms look a lot bigger. And then you go in and it's very, very tiny room or they go absolutely stunning renovation. And you walk in and it's just a basic kind of Home Depot cabinetry and countertop. And, you know, you want to be honest in your listing. So even though it's not, you know, you're not creating this crazy excitement online, but the, the disappointment that comes with that after the showing is definitely something that slows down um, you getting offers on your listing. So over the years, I've taken a lot of buyers too, and they go, oh my God, this house looks so much better online, right? Crazy doctored pictures, like I say, those fishbowl lenses, stuff like that. They, they look great online. They're not your best friend though, because the last thing you want to do is people feel disappointed when they walk through the door. That's not something that's going to bring you an offer, right? So honestly, it's definitely a good policy when you're loading listings online. Uh, again, if the front yard needs to be mowed or cleaned up, you let your client know that it's the first picture that's going to draw them in. We always put that front of the house picture. That's the first picture that's going to make people click on the actual listing and go through. So it's definitely a start of where they need to clean up and start looking good. Just bring more traffic to your um, listing. You okay? Um, take excellent photos. So the last thing I hate is to see a nice listing loaded of an area I know and the agents taking pictures themselves, spend the money, take the pictures with the photographer, get the virtual tour and, um, you know, blow people's minds. Um, increase traffic through market exposure. So think about your target audience, bump up marketing. In some markets, direct mail might work. Like, you know, if you're going for an elderly kind of crowd, they definitely have time, cut type to stop and look at their mail more than go online. Um, you can, and they say, you know, I don't know how true it is now because I see sort of a resurgence of a lot of flyers in the mail, but there was a time where things really started to slow down. And uh, we had a marketing person come and talk at the other office I was at. And they said, hey, you know what? Have you noticed that there's not a lot of snail mail? If you send paper um, uh, marketing out to the neighborhoods, they're going to go, oh, and take a stop and look at it now because not getting as many in their mailbox. So, I mean, it's something to think about. We, uh, newspapers aren't something I definitely do a lot of uh, hardly at all anymore. Maybe sometimes in the Chinese newspaper, if I have a listing, that I think it'll appeal to that market. Um MLS definitely pulls the most buyers, but you also have Remax, right? We're viewed online. Uh, Craigslist and Kijiji, but I warn you guys to list really carefully on there. You have to make sure you identify yourself as an agent. Rico has a lot of restrictions. Um, they'll definitely pull your ad if somebody reports you. Um, and they'll ask you why you loaded it that way on Kijiji. So you have to make sure that you load it with the office information and your, your information as an agent. Uh, your own website, uh, any other social media you can use that's great to push it out. And if you're in WhatsApp groups, if you're in Facebook groups, um, if you, uh, you have any other social circles that you run in online, um, definitely you can push it out there and bring more traffic. Um, this one says offer contests for agents or brokers. We don't see that a lot these days because things are flying off the shelf still fairly quickly, but you do see those different things where they offer like a commission incentive, you know, 3% if sold by November 1st, um, free TV if sold, you know, if firm for your clients kind of thing, whatever you can offer those things. Um, we'll see if the market slows down a little bit and we can push those a little bit more to help push our listings. Host an open house. So who's excited that we can do open, open houses again? So I, I always try to explain to my clients, especially when they were upset during COVID times, we couldn't do open houses, that they're really for the agent. And it's true. It's an honest thing. Um, very low percentage of houses are actually sold during the open house. But it is an excellent time for you guys to grab buyers. So if you publicize the event, you put uh, information out online, you're drawing people to that house, which is good. The likelihood that somebody might buy it is higher, definitely. But you're also grabbing a whole bunch of buyers from that. So make sure you're collecting all their information from the open house. Your lifeline as an agent, and I always tell people who say, you know, I'm a buyer agent. I only want to work with buyers. But the thing is, is that your, your existence is, depends on you being a listing agent. How, nobody knows your name unless you have a sign in the lawn. And when you have a sign in the lawn, you pull other business from it. That's where you get your pool of buyers from. So you're not constantly looking for business. That sign on the lawn is doing such a good job for you. Free advertising, people driving by, pulling in up buyers, which we all know we make more on that end. Um, and so many other good things. 
So send out e-flyers. I don't know how many people do that. I used to send out a newsletter every month. Um, I kind of stopped doing that and trying to send out more pertinent information, setting people up for searches. I found that was more than just passively sending out newsletters. But now I'm kind of getting back to it a little bit because Remax back office makes it so easy. You can set it up for your clients. So I don't have to think of the content every month. Um, so it's not a lot of time for me to do that passive marketing. So I think you guys should definitely look into it in the back office. Um, and advertise a limited time offer that buyers can snatch up if they act quickly. So for instance, hey, you know, the hot water tank is a rental. And if you hurry up and come and buy this property, um, we're going to pay the hot water tank rental for the next year or two, which isn't really that much. Generally, they're about $30 a month. Not a huge cost to your clients, but it definitely attracts people to come in, feel they're getting something for their money. And co-op your advertising. So check with other professions. Um, so you can pull together you with a mortgage agent or a home inspector or something and push out marketing together. So it lowers the cost for you, but you get out to a bigger market that way. So that one I kind of went over quickly, quickly, because I want to just go focus on ways to increase traffic directly to how you're loading a listing and how you're dealing with as an agent. Um, does anybody have any questions there so far? Okay, so I'm gonna go on real quick. Um, the biggest mistake I see when people have listings uh, up for a long time is that they um, don't do certain things. Okay, so I am gonna show you mine purposely. I left up, I'm gonna fix it today um, to show you how you're not increasing traffic. So the first thing is if you have done a listing and you've loaded it, one second here, let me just share my screen. I don't think that's shared properly. Okay, so you've loaded a listing, okay? Uh, you've put it up and it hasn't gone the first week for your bid date. It's not a problem, it happens to everybody, it just happened to me. So my listing has been loaded and I haven't reloaded it, okay? I'm gonna do so today. I thought, I talked to my client about it yesterday, we sort of strategized what we're gonna do and I just left it up today to show you guys Biggest mistake here so far. I haven't gone in and adjusted the price and taken off my bid date instructions, right? So we see a lot of those. Those automatically show sort of a failed listing, right? In, in the sense that it didn't go the way we wanted it to go. We didn't get our offers or we didn't get what we were asking for. So this tells what? A couple of things. If you have a buyer asking about this property, you're going to go, hey, it didn't go when it was supposed to on its bid date. Maybe we can get a good price for this, right? It's automatically going to get you hosed on the price for sure. Uh, you have to make sure that you're taking your listings. My preferred method is taking your listing off and loading a whole new listing. So this is what I've encouraged my client to do. I'm going to get the paperwork signed and do that today. Um, at the very least, you have to go in and edit it. So you have to go in and edit it, put back up the true price that you want, and delete your showing instruct or your offer instructions in the brokerage remarks. Because you want to make it look like to anybody looking at this listing that it's fine. Anybody can check the history of it, obviously, and let you know. But you want to let them know that, no, we're going forward and this is the price that we want, right? So my clients want more of a 560 sort of mark. Um, they weren't really getting what they wanted. So we're just going to go back up at that and see what happens on the market, right? Um, I explain them. Things are a little bit slower, especially up in Peterborough. We're feeling it here a bit in Toronto, definitely feeling it up in Peterborough. Um, so we're going to do no offer date. And I think it just go up for a true price, right? Um, so definitely, definitely make sure you go and breathe some new life into your listings. So if I change the price on this, what's going to happen? It's not going to show as new listing anymore. So here right now it says new. It's going to show PC to everybody. So automatically everybody will know that there's been a price change on it. Um, also, the thing that happens is when you load a new listing, anybody who's signed up on Realtor.ca uh, or any agents that have a prospect search or, um, you know, a collaborate search up for their clients, um, it will get funneled back into all their emails again. So it kind of breeds new life into it that way because it's going to get into everybody's inboxes and they're going to go, oh, look at this property. Um, I would definitely try to change the front pick if I had a different angle pick of it or an outside pick. I'm going to see if I have a different pick of the outside of the building here that I can use um, just so it looks like a different listing. 
I might change the description around a little bit. Maybe there was something with the description that didn't grab people and they didn't, they weren't too interested in it. So uh, I have come have a look at this hidden gem. Maybe I'll say, don't miss this opportunity or try to say some different things about the property because obviously something that you did the first time isn't working 100% for this listing. So don't just be a passive agent. I hate seeing PC, right? PC and then the, pro uh, the property has been sitting on the market for like 40 days. What, what has this agent done to change? You have to constantly be working and changing. We got the listing. Our clients put the trust in us. Now it's our job to draw that traffic to it. Sometimes it doesn't work the first, like in this case, it's my own listing. Sometimes it doesn't work the first week, but you cannot sit passive. It has to be on the top of your mind. This is an active listing. What can I do to improve it? What can I do to improve the traffic to this listing, right? Um, so in order to do that, just quickly, you can't just take it down and load it again just because you have a listing agreement. The office needs a cancellation. So it is a little bit of work. Cancellation for this listing and a new listing agreement put up for it. Okay. So if you guys are confused what paperwork you have to do for that, just let me know. But I encourage you guys to do it. I think it's one of the best ways to breathe new life into your listing. Sometimes you have to uh, load things two or three times uh, before it goes because just you just get those properties that just don't go sometimes. All right. Does anybody have any questions so far? Any difficulties they had in their own listing? Any listings they have up currently that aren't moving? Yeah. Um, so sometimes I see the uh, bid date and it's like uh, they passed the bid date mm -hmm. and then they uh, price changed it from like $199 to $2.4. Mm -hmm. So like, does that make your listing look bad or work like no because everybody that? understands now as an agent working that everything's under price so right. like i'm telling my buyers when you go on realtor.ca look at least 100 to 200 thousand dollars under that's going to end up at your budget right so i think as an agent if you see that you're gonna you're just gonna automatically know okay they underpriced it they did a bid date it didn't sell so now it's back up <laughs> for true price is what i call it for more what they want right at the end of the day Anybody else got a listing sitting online? Something not, not selling, something that you need to push a little bit? Okay, we're going to go on to this other article because it was more about what you can do as an individual agent and not what you can do necessarily um, to your actual listing. Um, so we're talking about 10 ways that we can increase traffic to our listings. One sec, let me minimize some things here because... My screen is full of stuff. So aside from pricing strategies and professional photography and a good listing description that captures people and easy to show with lock boxes, all those points that we talked about are actual listing. How can we as agents pull more traffic to our listings, right? So we have to be known as an agent. And how do we do that? How do we push ourselves out there? So we have to use marketing for our clients that are good, obviously, for their listings, but good for us, too, because we need to be well known. Right. So it says here, as as realtors, you lead small but mighty teams. So it makes sense that between juggling phone calls, showings and paperwork, it's easy for marketing to fall the wayside. Um, so you got to focus on your marketing for sure. You've got to make sure that you're getting stuff out there. So my favorite things are always just sold. I always put out a just sold when I sold something, um, because I find that I get the most calls off of that. So you have to make sure don't let your marketing fall away. So if you find that something is working for you or works a little bit, be really consistent about it. Um, but what you can do as an agent is definitely go mobile, right? I find a lot of people haven't gone mobile. Um, it makes sense that the home buyers spend time looking at listings on the go. They want to make sure that you're user friendly. You can get online, you can see it. So we are helped out by that because realtor.ca is very mobile friendly. All our listings would be loaded on there. Um, but what, make sure when you're loading your listings that you click that DDX IDX. It's a big thing for you to click yes to because that's very helpful for you to be mobile if you don't have your own mobile site. So what that does is that pushes your listing out to Zillow, Zolo, and all of these um, different websites that are really you know easy to use on your phone and people are checking. How Sigma is another one that's a favorite of all of our clients. Um, so make sure that you do that. 
Um, this, this talks a little bit about SEO marketing. So unless you know what you're doing with SEO marketing, which I don't, I just have a basic understanding of it. Um, you have, generally have to have a company pushing it out there. So if people are looking for Scarborough Realtor, your name's coming up at the top of the list. Um, and finding your website and finding your listings that way, but do anything you can to help yourself be mobile. You know, I know a lot of agents out there um, have created apps. I think the trick for the app is that you can't necessarily market yourself. You have to find something that is useful for people as a tool to use um, to be a little more mobile on your app, but find different ways where you can increase that mobility for people who are looking on their tablets and phones and, you know, laptops and stuff for your, for your um, listing. Um, build branding around your market. So I always talk to new agents, especially, and I think I say to them, you have to create your business card. Yep. Yeah. Um, but you have to create branding for yourself. So I tell them to go and take a headshot and use that favorite headshot in everything. If, even if you don't have a slogan or you haven't branded your own logo necessarily, just that alone is branding yourself because being really consistent. I've seen agents who use different, different things. Like there's a picture on their um, business card, a picture on the um, flyer they've sent out and a different picture on um, uh, a billboard or something. But you have to understand at the end of the day, you're still branding yourself. So consistency is key. You have to use that same picture throughout because people are going to recognize it. So they're going to say, oh, look, that's Seraph's marketing because I recognize it before I even read the name on it because she's really consistent. I saw it on her billboard and in the back of the bus, on her business card, on her website, on her realtor.ca picture. So it's super important about branding, okay? You have to brand yourself. Um, you, with what else is it saying? You don't want busy and outdated websites. You definitely don't want outdated pictures. You ever met those um, real estate agents who hard and you come to the door and you're a completely different person. So don't do that. You have to keep on updating your marketing and make sure that it's fresh and new. I'm putting up there for Seraph. <laughs> um, yeah, again, here, this is talking about upgrading your photography. I kind of went ahead of myself there. Um, it's a really, really small investment for you guys to update your marketing, make your business cards look fresh, make them nice. Um, I see a lot of people use um, just the basic business cards that, you know, the, the some of the offices give free or like your uh, your printer just designs you quickly. Try to do something that leaves a lasting impression because you got to remember at the end of the day, every time you're handing out or talking to somebody, you're, give, you're leaving a lasting impression for them. So you're increasing um, that traffic to your listing, but you're also increasing awareness of your brand, right? So, you know, I did things like that soft touch on our business card or the, you know, curved edges. I get a lot of compliments on it. A lot of people talk about it. I've seen some people do the foil, make the logo pop, uh, do something that makes you stand out a little bit more than the rest of everybody go for video these are my favorite and I haven't done a lot of them lately I've seen you do a bunch of seraph I've done a couple um it's really popular but it's really catching I find myself watching them a lot of my friends online that are doing them so it's not just seraph but other agents and other brokerages um are doing these walkthrough tours of their listings if I find myself watching them and I'm bored with real estate day to day you've got to take into account that that a lot of people are probably watching them too. And I see the views going up and up and up on these. That's also increasing um, traffic to your listing and bringing more people in to pay attention to what's happening, right? So video tour, walk through, talk a little bit about the property, be excited, be engaging um, and try them. And I see a lot of people posting them on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, um, Anything you can do, you just can't, if you're going to post it anywhere on MLS, if you're going to put a link up or anything to a website or something that's hosting the video, it can't be branded. So you have to be careful about that. But anywhere else you put it, it can be branded. Just on MLS, it can't be branded, just like your virtual tours, right? Um, put the social in social media. So you may find that simply posting listings on your social media channels doesn't earn the engagement or results you're looking for. So people throw them up all the time. Again, I do as well. Um, you think of it like a conversation. If you only talk about yourself, the other person will feel disinterested or disengaged. Social media is no different. So in addition to posting to your accounts, join real estate interest groups. How many of you guys have tried to find real estate interest groups online? Right. OK, some of them are actually working. So my commercial listings, they just don't move as fast on um, on um, uh, Facebook. If I throw it up on Facebook or I throw it up on MLS, it just doesn't move as fast 
And it's just sort of a mere posting at the end of the day. So especially with commercial, I find that I have to find, look outside the box. So I try to go to an ICI world and post, which I get some inquiries on. Uh, I join some Facebook groups, um, commercial like realtor to realtor groups. Um, those are great to post on because a lot of people are looking for their clients in those groups. And I've had people ask me questions about the listings that way, right? So at least it's something like the worst thing I keep on repeating over and over again is to get that listing in your hand, throw it up on MLS and forget about it and not do anything with it, right? So you want to definitely uh, establish yourself, you know what I mean, as an uh, expert in that area, in that industry, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm loading this listing, I'm in Scarborough, you know, I'm always loading in Scarborough, ask me if you need something in Scarborough, uh, and push it out on those social media um, uh, websites. Uh, you, you're just looking for some interaction, you're looking for some people to, to ask you questions, maybe ask to see it, even if they're not interested in this, they might ask to see something else, right? Depending on uh, what you have as a listing. Use listing websites strategically. So websites like Zillow and Trulia have a bit of a bad rep, but when used strategically, they can help bring interested prospects into your website. Some buyers may look for properties before they look for realtors. So listing websites can actually be an effective way to get in front of these buyers. So I know a lot of the, when Zillow and everything came out, I had clients who were complaining that they were getting posted to it, uh, which is why they've now put that option if you want it distributed to the IDX and the DDX portals, because there was a lot of backlash before these websites didn't have, they weren't allowed to post the solds, right? I don't know if you guys remember that, newer agents probably not, but back um a few years back now, it just became um, that they could post the solds and they weren't really accurate. So I know I had a client personally, I posted her listing up and she said, oh my God, Zillow saying you can sell for, I don't know, $100,000 less than I want. I don't want my posting on there. Why'd you put it on there? I didn't say you could put it on there. Oh, I said, oh, I didn't put it on there automatically when you get loaded to Treb. It pushes it out to because these Zillow and House Sigma, they subscribe to portals at Treb. So once we push a listing out, it goes automatically in realtor.ca and on all these other websites. So I noticed that over the years, Treb put that IDX, DDX. So your client has the choice. Nowadays, it's not so bad because more exposure is better. And Zillow and House Sigma have become better at guessing what the sold prices are going to be because now they actually have those statistics in their hand. Um, but before it was terrible. They were, they were bad. Uh, and I hated when my clients used them, right? So the goal is to use listing sites to find buyers who expressed interest in specific property. If they click through your site, they'll probably, they'll pro they're will they probably interested in learning more. To help facilitate clicks to your site, make sure you provide detailed information about the property and plenty of photos. Also a capture. I find a lot of people don't have a capture on their website. So um, you definitely want to have a place where people can sign up for more information. Contact me, put your information in, put your email, put your phone number in, something like that. Uh, don't leave prospects hanging. Um, so when people get in, that's the same thing as answering your phone, basically. Um, when people try to get in contact with you and they're a prospect, they, they, they might be interested in the property. You can't leave them hanging because the thing is, is that normally people have a really short attention span. If they want to see your property and they re are really interested, they might call you and maybe even an hour later, or two hours later, if you haven't called them back, they may call another agent to see your own listing. Um, so it's minimizing how much you're showing this or they might get fed up and just go see the other ones they're interested in online. So in order to increase that traffic and also increase your chances of double ending that deal, you want to like engage your prospects, you want to get a hold of them and say, hey, how are you? What information did you want to know about the property? Um, is there a time I can show it to you? I always encourage people to meet me face to face because I find it such a better capture if you meet them face to face, right? Um, have a way with words, which sounds more appealing, beachfront home must sell or beautiful beachfront home that makes every day a Mediterranean vacation. Words matter and they're especially important for attracting buyers to your listing. So again, we talk about loading that good listing. How do you load an attractive listing online? You have to sit and think about 
the wording that you put online because that's what's attracting people to come in and see the house so I talk a lot about I did a, lo a load of great listing session I might do it again actually talking about this now and being listing in season you want to load things that aren't necessarily in the description so I find people just repeat a lot what's in their listing four bedroom home with walk out to balcony yeah okay this is stuff that's already in your listing. Everybody knows it's a four bedroom bungalow. What are you going to say that are gonna people, pull people in to see it, okay? So this is a good uh, um, example, beachfront home or beautiful beachfront home that makes every day a Mediterranean vacation. People are gonna go, oh, you know, it does look beautiful. Oh, look, it is nice. You know, gorgeous, um, enjoy gorgeous sunsets from your back porch. You know, maybe if it's facing, you know, uh, sunset every evening something something that's going to draw people in to see it and increase that traffic right uh, instead of focusing and highlighting every feature focus on the ones that stand out or are unique so unique is definitely a thing what's going to make me see there's three properties in this neighborhood what makes me want to see this one so beachfront property granite countertops original wood flooring but above all paint a picture what it feels like to live in the property so again it's like what i'm telling clients to declutter to give me a blank slate because I want to put the buyer in that property. The wording that you're using is drawing that person into the property. So it's going to increase your traffic. You're going to use good wording to bring them in and tell them, hey, you want to come and see this property. You can't miss it. Um, get involved in your community. So I don't know how many of you do this. I try to do it as much as I can. COVID kind of stopped that a little. So uh, I used to do a skating event every year. Uh, which I hopefully can get back to this year. It'll be super exciting. I love it. All the kids in the neighborhood come. I serve cookies and hot chocolate. Um, sponsor a little league team. Very often I bought like the jerseys for my kids' school or something like that. They'll let you put a little logo on it. Host a tour of homes. Host a happy hour for residents in your city. That might get a little expensive. Sponsor a do-it-yourself craft event with local artisans. Host a historic tour of your city. So it says, check out Manhattan real estate agent Jeff Goodman's tour. You guys can check that out. Uh, he does historic tours of the city, right? And gets his name out there. Your name out there is as important as your listing out there because it'll draw more people into your listings on a regular basis and it'll make your listings move faster, right? Uh, stay top of mind after closing. It's easy to fall off past clients' radars after closing. But don't forget the importance of referrals for generating traffic to your listings. Uh, by maintaining strong relationship with past clients, you can stay on top of the mind. I don't only find it's just for referrals. I find it for, it's for the client themselves. So you'd be surprised. A lot of times I've called back clients and said, hey, you know, I know I sold you this property like five years ago. And I have a really good investment for you guys. It's in the neighborhood. And I think it'll be really good. And the kids are getting older now and you probably need something for them. Do you maybe want to look at this and invest? And you'd be surprised when people are like, oh, yeah, that'd be a great idea. Actually, we were just talking about that, you know, especially when, you know, you sold it two, three, five years, those renewal term times at your mortgage, you want to get back in touch with your clients and see if they want to use some of the equity to diversify their, por their portfolio, especially if you have a listing that you think is going to fit their needs. Um, I have uh, flipper clients that I've worked with, contractor clients. I'll call them every time I get a, a fixer upper. I'll say, hey, you know, I got one that really needs a basement rental or a total gut job, or, you know, you love those 50 by 150 lots um, for teardowns. You have to keep in touch and keep on top of your client's mind and let them know that you're always thinking of them when you get a listing. Don't just think I always have to find somebody new. You have to keep on going back to your center of influence over and over. It's like when I bring you guys all in and you're new uh, agents and I keep on telling you work your center of influence, it's the core of what you're going to go back to over and over again. Anytime I have a slow period in real estate, I go back to my center of influence and I always pull business back off of it, right? Um, and it just says a couple of ways to, you know, stay on top of your client's mind after closing. So thoughtful housewarming gifts. So think of things that they really, really like. Um, and uh, what they want to wait, maybe while you're walking through client um, um, properties with your clients, um, there's something that there's a theme that keeps on coming up. So I know that one of my clients recently whose closing is coming up at the end of the month, she kept on talking about this mirror that we saw in a couple of stage properties. So I've been trying to call and source this mirror for her because I thought, what a neat idea if I get her that mirror for closing, right? So something thoughtful, like it is nice to give that bottle of wine or the box of chocolates, but it's nicer to personalize it. Uh, I know clients uh, were laughing one time we sold a house in Pickering 
and the chandelier in the dining room was excluded, which they were aware of and was fine. But they literally put back the absolute worst <laughs> like fixture ever. It wasn't anything nice that you'd put over your dining room table. Uh, so we ended up purchasing a, uh, you know, a pretty chandelier after closing. Um, and uh, yeah, they were really happy with that. So something personal, think of something personal. Uh, content, again, you can share content with them. A regular newsletter. Remax makes it so easy in the back office to share content now. You don't even have to think of it. And it's totally logoed. It looks like it's coming from you and not a generic Remax thing. So definitely check it out. Um, and warm fuzzies. People love feeling special. So remind past clients that you're thinking of them. You can send wishes on major holidays, their birthday, um, you know, something just to let them know that you're definitely keeping them in the top of your mind. So if you guys, let me just stop the share here now. I feel like I talked and talked. It was a lot of content. It was two articles and a little bit of uh, Stratus training there. I thrown at you this morning, but just let me know. If you have a listing that's sitting and you don't know how to push it, just let me know. Just give me a quick call. I can look it up online and I can help you maybe reword wording, think about how to strategize going forward and push that listing. Because I got to say the worst feeling in the world is losing a listing. It's the last thing you want to do. Don't give up if it doesn't go the first week or if it doesn't go for what you wanted it for, or it doesn't, your, your listing doesn't go necessarily how you anticipated, I guess I should say. The last thing you can do is just be really passive and leave it and be frustrated with it and not touch it. And then it expires and then it goes to another agent, right? You want to take it. You want to relist it. You want to push it. You want to change the wording. You want to change the photography. You want to do something that lets you get that sale at the end of the day because you already put in the effort to nurture your lead, to get that listing appointment, to get your paperwork signed, to put the effort of loading that listing in. So you want to reap the rewards of that now right? You don't want to lose listing at the end of the day and you don't want it to not sell and just expire and your client decide to take it off the market, right? You want to get the sale at the end of the day. So is everybody good there online? I'm trying to get somebody in. Uh, I'm trying to speak to a couple of lawyers right now because I want to get somebody in to talk to us about new foreign tax, right? So we all have a better understanding and how it goes where clients ask us. So I'll keep you guys posted when that's coming up. Hopefully, I can get a Thursday evening or a Tuesday morning with one of these lawyers. They're busy people. Um, but yeah, everybody enjoy yourselves this week and let me know if you need anything. Very nice seeing all of you this morning. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks, Christine. Bye. Thank you, VG. Bye-bye.